Hey guys, in this video I will show you my favorite technical analysis concepts for trading. I personally use these concepts on a daily basis, no matter what I'm trading. There are tons of ways to do technical analysis and it can be overwhelming for beginners. After 6 years of trading daily, these are my absolute favorite technical analysis concepts. But keep in mind that technical analysis is just one of many skills you need as a trader. If you want to know more about all the skills you need, go to my website joelonecrypto.com and check out my trading course. It is 100% free for my subscribers and you will find the link in the description down below. However, trading is always risky and most traders lose money and nothing in this video should be considered advice of any kind. So the first concept of technical analysis I'm going to show you is called the golden crossover. And to find this crossover, we need to use the 50 EMA, which is a moving average line based on the last 50 candles. Then we also need to have the 200 EMA, which is an average line based on the last 200 candles. When these two lines are crossing over like this, and the 200 EMA line is below the 50 EMA line, then we have what we call a golden crossover. This set trading concept is very, very powerful, especially on the daily time frame. And I usually use the golden crossover on the daily time frame to find a trend shift in the market. This is of course a bullish sign that we have a golden crossover on the daily time frame. And now I'm going to show you how to add these lines into the chart. So I will remove the lines from my chart and I will go to indicators up here in trading view and I will search for EMA and I will pick moving average exponential. And I will click this uh, two times to add two lines. Now we have the default a nine EMA line into the chart. So we need to modify the settings. Go up here to the left and click settings and click on the tab inputs. Change the value length nine to length 50. And I prefer to use a yellow color for the 50 EMA and of course a bit thicker line. And now we do the same thing for the second EMA here, go to settings and change the color to green and make the line a bit thicker. And then go to the inputs tab again and change the value nine to 200. And now, as you can see, you have the two lines added to the chart. And to show you how powerful this trading concept is on the daily time frame, I will just show you a few examples here real quick. So this is the chart on Bitcoin. We have the golden crossover right here. And as we can see, it indicates a new uptrend for Bitcoin. So let's uh, scroll back in time here on Bitcoin. And as you can see here, we had a golden crossover. We had a small uptrend. This would, of course, not be 100% accurate, but you will see how powerful this actually is. And here we have another golden crossover. And look at the price action after the crossover, just going straight up right here. Let's go back further to see if we have any crossovers. And these don't happen very often on the daily time frame, but when they happen, they are very, very powerful. So here we have another uh, golden crossover. And as you can see, it's a sign of a new uptrend. And it works the same way on stocks and Forex as well. It's super powerful. Let me show you an example here on Nasdaq, we have the same kind of crossover here. The price is going straight up. Let's go back in the chart and show you some other older examples. Uh, we have a small crossover here, price action just going straight up. The same thing for the dollar index. We're now looking at the US dollar. Let's go back. We don't have a crossover just yet on the US dollar, but let's go back in time here to see. Uh, we have a crossover right here. Look at the price action, guys. And this is just how powerful this is. I will show you one last example uh, on Nvidia. On this recent pump, we had the golden crossover right here and price is going straight up. Using the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA combined and looking for crossovers to identify an uptrend, it seems to be some kind of magic level to use exactly the 50 and the 200 where it gives very few false signals and it maximizes real uh, bullish uh, signals. But this concept is the most powerful when it's combined with other entry signals. For example, I like to use it combined with the RSI. So I wait for the crossover to happen and then I wait for the RSI, uh, the yellow line on, on the RSI to cross over like this, still not entering and waiting for the yellow line to finally cross and position itself below the purple line. And that's an entry signal for me. In this case, that would be an entry right at the top of this candle. So just this is the entry candle. So entering after this candle is closing right here. And that would be a super good trade. So that's just an example. But of course, you always need to backtest yourself and find your own edge. I'm just sharing my favorite um, trading technical analysis concepts in this video. The next uh, trading concept is one of the absolute most 
powerful trading concepts out there and almost everyone knows about it. But I think it's one of the most overlooked trading concepts out there. And it is the flat support. So you just draw a support line horizontally just like this and boom, there you go. It was that easy. We can also draw the most obvious ones in the chart, the ones you see after two seconds looking at the chart. So this is the obvious one right here. This is also very obvious. And we can also draw a support line right here. This is something you should not spend more than a few seconds uh, drawing. It's very important to not force uh, support lines because support lines are only powerful if it's super, super obvious. And the idea behind the support lines is that it usually needs more force to break a support line to the downside. So if the price comes down to this line again, it may need more selling pressure to break this line and punch through to the downside and continue further down. And I would say the more obvious the support line is, the more powerful it is as well. So in this case, this would be the most powerful uh, support line. And the reason why support lines are so powerful, it is because people who missed the uptrend, they get a new chance to enter the price right here. And since it's such a obvious level, a lot of people just simply enter the trade around these levels. And also day traders, swing traders, they will also probably take long positions around support levels because they know that people use these kind of levels to trade based on. So it's very simple, very straightforward, easy to understand, but yet it's very powerful because so many people are using these kind of support lines. And when it comes to flat support lines like this, it's also most powerful on the daily time frame because the daily time frame in TradingView is the default time frame. So most people will look at the daily time frame. And when it comes to support lines, you don't want to enter a long position just because the price touched a support line. For example, right here, if the price comes down here, you don't want to enter right away. You need to wait for some confirmation but not too much confirmation so that you miss the move. So let me go back in time and show you an old example with um, a powerful support and resistance that we had on Bitcoin. This is back in 2017 and 2018. We had this very obvious uh, dip right here after the crash and that's the level people used as a support. They just took a drawing tool right here at the bottom of this drop and just like this, a very obvious support. And it's also very important to know that a support is not a specific price point. It's not a specific line, but it's more so a range. So it's important to keep track on this range to avoid taking dumb shorts at the bottom of a price action. And also you can use uh, the support range to find nice, good long entries as well. And the more times the price action is testing the support, the more confirmed the support range is becoming. But also the more times the price is testing the support, the weaker the support gets as well. And once the support uh, area breaks, it can be a pretty drastic drop. All right, the next pattern I want to show you is the falling wedge. The falling wedge is a price pattern where the price is starting with the heavy drop, just like this. And then the price is making a correction to the upside, but still not going all the way up to the previous high. Then we have another drop and we are breaking this support and going lower than this point. So this point should be lower than this point, right? Then we have another smaller correction to the upside, still not going above this level. And then finally, a fifth wave going down once again, forming a lower low. So with this pattern, we have lower highs. We also have lower lows. Now, what we do with this pattern is we draw a resistance line from the first peak, the first high, and going all the way here, drawing it down like this. So it will connect to all three tops. And we are going to draw a support line to all of these three bottoms as well. And we can clearly see the pattern. We have some kind of sloped uh, resistance here and a sloped support. We have a few important criteria for this pattern. The resistance line should be sloped. We should have at least three connections to the resistance line. Doesn't have to be perfect, but three lower highs and three lower lows. And this support line should be sloped, not straight. Resistance should be sloped, not straight as well. But the support line should be less sloped than the resistance line so that the endpoints they are coming closer and closer to one another and that they are forming some kind of apex here at the end. It doesn't have to be connected like this, but they should be coming closer and closer. And this is a bullish pattern. So when we have a breakout to the upside here, when we break this line, uh, it's usually considered a bullish pattern. So we can expect the price going upwards if we break this uh, resistance to the upside. And you may wonder why is this a bullish pattern? Because we have lower highs and also lower lows 
And that is usually considered a bearish pattern when we have lower lows and lower highs. But the reason this is considered a bullish pattern is because sellers are in control at the beginning of the pattern and they sellers are selling, rejecting the price lower and lower. Buyers are constantly buying in here. And the fact that we have lower lows in a sloped way like this means that sellers are gradually losing control and buyers are supporting more and more. And when the price is coming closer to the apex and it's breaking this resistance to the upside, it usually means that the sellers are losing control and we have a heavy spike in the price. But of course, Falling wedges can also break to the downside, but the probability is more towards the upside. So let me show you a few examples in the real market. So this is the most uh, recent example on uh, NASDAQ on the daily time frame, And this is a pattern I was looking at for a long time and I was predicting this bull run by using this pattern. And since I knew that the probability uh, for the stock market in the US was to the upside, it was more easy for me to take uh, good long positions on Bitcoin. So this is how I use this pattern to make profit on Bitcoin. Even if the falling wedge was on the stock market, I still used it for trading Bitcoin. So what we have here, we have lower highs just like this four obvious lower highs and we have one two three lower lows and all of the criterias are met in this pattern we have a sloped resistance like this to the downside and we have a sloped support just like this as well to the downside but the support is less sloped than the resistance so the lines are coming closer and closer together and falling wedges are usually not perfect so the pattern would be more perfect if we saw drop like this all the way down here and then coming up here and there and up here and down here and then breaking up that would be a more perfect pattern but Patterns are not perfect in the real market, but we still have to be able to identify the patterns to be able to trade them correctly. And this is what I did. This is exactly how I drew it on the stock market. And when we started to pump from here, when we had a higher low right here inside of the pattern, I thought that we might break to the upside, but it was here when we finally broke this pattern to the upside, I was extremely bullish on both the stock market and on Bitcoin because Bitcoin is in many cases following the American stock market as well. Not always, but it happens very often. And as you can see here, the stock market was going up the first quarter of the year. Bitcoin, first quarter of the year, going up almost uh, 90%. It's a very useful pattern. And even for scalpers and day traders, it's also important to know that we have this pattern on the daily time frame because when I scalp and day trade, uh, it's important for me to know the overall uh, probability if it's to the upside or to the downside. In this case, I took more long positions when I day traded and scalped and catching bottoms on Bitcoin. And since I knew that this pattern was breaking to the upside on the stock market, I was a lot more careful at taking short position during this time. And it saved me a lot of potential losses. So it's a very powerful pattern and this pattern happens a lot in bull markets. And we have one more example right here on Bitcoin. We have uh, lower highs just like this and we have lower lows just like this, right? And again, these patterns are not perfect, but it's important to be able to identify when we have one of these patterns. So we have lower highs here. We have lower lows, but the support line is sloped less than the resistance line. So the lines are coming closer and closer to one another. And once we have a breakout on the upside, that is a bullish sign and the probability is more to the upside. And as you can see here, the price went up like 62% in just a few weeks. So very, very powerful pattern, but it takes some practice to be able to identify these patterns when they happen. So feel free to go back in time, go to the daily time frame on NASDAQ or S&P 500 and see if you can draw this falling wedge. So the next pattern is the ascent triangle it looks like this we have a flat resistance like that and we have a sloped support going to the upside like this and the idea behind this pattern is, is very straightforward the price is usually coming from an uptrend like this forming a new top price is rejecting dropping like this and it forms a new bottom and we have another pump to the upside going up like this and we have a double top now double top here and price is going down forming a new higher low and then going up again to this resistance forming a triple top in the price action and it goes down like this forming a new higher low so we have one two three highs that are flat we have one two three higher lows a sloped support like that when we are moving closer to the apex to the end of the pattern eventually the price has to break to one 
of the sides, up or down. So this pattern is usually very bullish, especially when the price is coming from an uptrend like this. It has a higher probability to break to the upside. But of course, we always have to wait for the breakout before taking a trade. And as always, we need to backtest and find these patterns in the chart and practice. And as always, we have to use this combined with other indicators and other reasons to enter a trade, not just because of the pattern. And the pattern doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to fulfill all these criteria, of course. We can also have ascending triangles where the price is coming from a downtrend like this and it's still considered a bullish pattern even if the price comes from a drop like this but it's a bit more bullish when it comes from an uptrend let me show you one real uh, life example here uh, i'm looking at solana at the moment uh, we can see that we have clear tops here we have a high here high here and high here and these are in my opinion about at the same level these are not perfectly aligned but good enough for this pattern in my opinion. So if I draw this line from the tops of the bodies, not the top of the wicks, from the bodies on the daily time frame, just like this, we actually have a connection one, two, three, four times here. And we can also see that we have a bottom right here. We have another bottom higher up in the price action and another one and another one. So we have higher lows as well. So drawing a line like this, connecting as many bottoms as possible. So right now we have one and two connections so best case scenario this one would also go down all the way here but i still think this is a valid ascending triangle and what i expect from here is the price going up maybe retesting here going down again maybe to here and then finally breaking out to the upside and this is also one of the reasons i am in a solana long position at the moment recording this video so let's see in the future if uh, this trade is going to be a winning trade or not all right the next pattern i want to show you is the golden pocket the golden pocket is the most powerful in a bull market when we have a price going up, we have an uptrend, and then we have the correction starting. And when we see that the correction is starting to happen, when the price is starting to form a top here, we take this tool in trading view. So go here and choose Fib retracement. And then you go to the most obvious bottom in the chart and you draw this tool from the bottom all the way up to the top just like this. And then you grab this tool at the edge here and you extend the lines. You keep the vertical level and you just extend it to the right. And now we have the Fibonacci retracement lines drawn out in the chart. And now you need to add the golden pocket zone into the chart. So what you do, you double click on any of these lines. So double click on, for example, this line and you activate the 0.65 level here. You just check that and make sure the color is uh, yellow. And if you don't have the 0.65 level in these settings, you can just add it manually. I will show you how to do it. Just click on any of the inactive uh, fields, for example, this one, and you type in here 0.65 and you change the color to yellow. And that's it. You click OK. All right. So now we have that all set up. So let's say that the price is going to go up a little bit more before it goes down further. Now we have to adjust the Fibonacci retracement tool. We cannot keep it here. We need to move it up here again. And now when the price is finally dropping, um, we keep this as is, right? And then we wait for the price to come down. It can be any pattern, but we wait for the price to come down to this level. I need to adjust the support box as well, but we wait for the price to come down back to this level. And this is a very strong buying zone, especially in a bull market. And there's a bunch of theory behind this uh, golden pocket level. And I'm not going to go into that in this video. I have a full video on Fibonacci retracement and the golden pocket on my channel. There's a tons of information out there about this level. I'm also going to show you some examples and explain how I use this to trade. So in a bull market, I wait for the price to, after a big uptrend, come down all the way back to this zone. And in many cases, I can expect the price to have a bounce from this level. But again, it's the same thing with all patterns. Combine it with other reasons to enter trade. Don't enter trade just because you see a golden pocket trade or anything like that. But it's still a very powerful trading concept. And I will now show you some real life examples. So the most recent one is in the Bitcoin chart. So we take the most obvious bottom before the uptrend and it's about here. So we take the Fibonacci retracement tool right here and we draw it from this bottom all the way to the top, right? So we draw it to the top. Let me just replay this to make it more obvious. So we have a nice uh, beginning of an uptrend here. So we take the Fibonacci retracement tool, we draw it from the bottom before the uptrend and we draw it all the way to the top, just like this. And I will just simply hide the EMA lines for now to make it easier to see. All right, so now we simply wait for the price to come back down to this golden pocket zone. 
But what we can see after a few candles that we have a new high right here. But we have our Fibonacci retracement line below this new top. So we need to adjust it. We need to follow the new high. So now we have the new Fibonacci retracement tool all lined up perfectly. So we keep uh, going here. And as you can see, we have new highs here again. So I need to adjust the lines. Now we can keep going. And finally, it's starting to drop. And now I'm waiting for the price to come down all the way to this golden pocket zone. So this is now the support area. And I'm waiting for confirmation. So we can see a green candle. It's confirmation for me. So I now want to enter this trade. I enter here. I put my stop loss below the golden pocket zone. And I'm waiting for the bounce. And as you can see, it was a very strong bounce from here. Very nice trade. But keep in mind that golden pocket zones can break drastically to the downside. That's very possible. That's why it's important to wait for confirmation. And of course, never go all in into a trade. Let's show another example. I will go back into the chart. All right, here's another nice example. We have a consolidation phase, market going sideways. And then finally, we have a new uptrend here. So we take the FIB retracement tool and we draw the tool from the bottom before the uptrend, just from this bottom. And we extend it all the way to the top right here. And we wait for the price to come down to this level. But as you can see, after a few candles, we had a new top. So we adjust the lines to match the new top. And the price is going down from here. So we have no new tops. We just extend the lines to the right, just like this. So we have the tool aligning to this bottom before the uptrend and at the swing high. So we can now draw a support box between the 0.65 level and the 0.618 level right here. And as you can see, we had some wicks punching through below, but no candle is closing below this level. And that's very important that no candle is closing below. And after a few candles, you can see that we had a huge continuation of this uptrend. When I see this happening in a bull market or when I expect the price to go up for other reasons as well, these trades can be extremely profitable for me. But of course, I've had losses in the past as well, but the probability is very high to the upside when I combine it with other reasons to enter as well. All right, the next concept I want to talk about is the bullish divergence. As you can hear in the name, a bullish divergence is a bullish pattern. And to find a bullish divergence, we need to use the RSI indicator or the MACD. In this case, I'm going to show the bullish divergence with the RSI. So what we are looking for is first, we need to look for a drop on the RSI where the RSI value is below 30. This line right here marks the 30 line and this line right here marks the 70 line. We need a value below this purple area. As you can see here, we have a dip below the 30 value. So this is now our first dip to use. And then we want to wait for the RSI to go back into the purple area. And we are waiting for the RSI to go below 30 again. So we have two dips below 30 one here and one here. And the most important thing is that the second dip below 30 is above the previous one. So that when we connect these two dips, this line is sloped to the upside like that, All right? So that's the first part. The second one is that we need two or more dips in the price action as well. We have one low here and we have a low down here. So we connect these two lows. And as you can see, these lows are sloped downwards opposite to the RSI, which is sloped upwards. And this is called a bullish divergence. And this pattern is used to find bottoms in the markets so after a heavy drop in the market. Uh, instead of entering a long position, maybe here or maybe here, that would be too early. Good traders are waiting for some pattern to show the reversal. In this case, we could wait for a bullish divergence. And when that happens, we can start to look for long positions. Still, it doesn't mean that I should enter a long position right away when I see a bullish divergence. But when I see one, I can be more optimistic looking for long positions. And I I would definitely not short when I see a bullish divergence. The most important thing when it comes to bullish divergence is that the price action line is sloped downwards and the RSI line is sloped upwards and the RSI needs to go back into the purple line and then below once again. You cannot uh, use a bullish divergence if the RSI just looks like this uh, below the 30 line like this. This is not the bullish divergence. It needs to go up and then back down. So let's uh, look at this example. Uh, is this a bullish divergence? We have a dip here and we have a dip here on, in the RSI. So we could draw a line from this bottom to this bottom and we have a sloped line. 
right? And we have a bottom here in the price action and a bottom here in the price action. We draw this line like this. So why is this not a bullish divergence? The problem with this is that the second dip in the RSI, it's not below the 30 line. As you can see, it's slightly above the 30 line. It's not a bullish divergence. And here's another example. We have a dip here below the third line, a dip here below the third line. So let's draw a line connecting these two dips, just like this. And we have a dip here in the price action, and we have a dip here in the price action. Well, it's because the price action is forming higher lows, not lower lows. Also, the RSI here is kind of flat. It should be sloped to the upside. And one more thing, even if uh, it would be sloped to the upside, for example, like this, even in this case, I don't think this is a valid bullish divergence, even if we would have a lower low uh, in the price action as well. If we had price going like this, forming a low here and a lower low, these lines would look uh, good, right? But in my opinion, it's still not bullish divergence. Why? It's because look at the RSI here. It's going back into the purple line, but it's going back up too high and it peaks above the 70 line. And in my opinion, when this happens, the bullish divergence is no longer valid. But again, feel free to go back in the charts and backtest yourself. That's always the best way and practice uh, by looking at the real-time market to get an idea. Because even if uh, 100 traders knows about this uh, divergence concept, all traders will trade it differently and everyone will combine it with different things. There's no right and wrong. It's just an overall concept to find cases where the market is supposed to do a reversal. It's just an overall concept to help traders find, identify bottoms in the market. Now I only show you the bullish versions of these patterns and concepts with all of these you can do it the opposite way as well remember the golden crossover where the 50 ema is crossing above the 200 ema line and we get a golden cross which is a bullish sign the same thing with the opposite way when the yellow line crosses below the 200 ema line again that's a bearish sign so we can do everything the opposite way however on the higher time frames in a market that is more likely to go up in the long run for example the stock market and bitcoin for example i think that these death crosses are not as powerful as the golden crossovers and do you remember when we drew the support lines like this to find support areas we can do the same thing with resistance lines as well for example in this case i would draw a resistance here and i would draw one here as well and the same thing with the ascending triangle where we had the triangle with a flat resistance and a sloped support to the upside uh, like this this is a bullish pattern right but we can do the same thing the other way around. We can look for price action where we get lower highs and where we have a flat support like this. This is called a descending triangle and this is a bearish pattern. For example, here on the Bitcoin price on a daily time frame back in 2018, we had a very clear descending triangle here and we had it multiple times uh, on Bitcoin and the stock market as well. Price coming from a downtrend, forming lower highs and a flat support. And finally, the price breaks to the downside. And the falling wedge that I talked about, which is also a bullish sign, looks something like this. Price coming in from a downtrend like this, breaking to the upside. It's a bullish pattern, but we can do it the other way around as well. It's called the rising wedge. It looks like this. So the price coming from an uptrend, going into this pattern, and this is a bearish pattern where the price could break to the downside here. That's a sign of a new uh, bearish move. The interesting thing with the rising wedge and the falling wedge is that this pattern is bearish no matter if the price comes from a downtrend like this or coming from an uptrend like this. It's still a bearish pattern. And the falling wedge is a bullish pattern no matter if the price is coming from an uptrend or if it's coming from a downtrend. And the Fibonacci golden pocket we talked about, the golden pocket here, we can use this in an uptrend where the price is coming from an uptrend like this, forming a new top, going down, going into this range, and we can look for a long position in this area, right? But we can also do it the opposite way. Instead of drawing it from the bottom left to the top right, we do this for a bullish move. We can draw it from top left to bottom right instead, and we get it the opposite way, right? So we can have a price coming from a downtrend, forming a new bottom, and then going up to the golden pocket zone and rejecting from there. Let me show you an example. In an uptrend, I look for the most obvious bottom before the uptrend. I go to the Fib retracement tool, clicking here at this bottom and drawing all the way to the most obvious top, the most recent top, which is here. And then I extend the lines to the right. You can see here, we had a strong reaction uh, in the golden pocket area. So I draw it from here to 
here. But when it's coming from a downtrend, we do it the opposite way. We look for the recent uh, highest top before the downtrend, and we look for the lowest point after the downtrend. So we take the Fib retracement tool, we go from top left now, clicking here and dragging all the way down here. And then we extend the lines to the right. And look at this reaction in the golden pocket zone. That would be a very nice short. And we can do the same thing with the RSI divergence. Instead of looking for a dip and then a higher dip in the RSI, we can look for a peak and then another peak with a lower high on the RSI to get the bearish divergence on the RSI. So we take this line tool and clicking on the highest point in the RSI and we draw it like this. We get a sloped resistance now in the RSI. The RSI is very high here above 70, going back down below 70 and back up above 70, but not making a new peak. Then we also look for the price action. We look for a top here and a top here where the price action is forming higher highs, just like this. And this is now a bearish uh, technical concept. So all of these uh, concepts and uh, patterns can be used in the opposite way for bearish patterns as well. I have videos on my channel with more information about all of these patterns. And I have a full free trading course on my website, joelonscrypto.com. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Peace out.